Hello, friends. It's Quinn here with PTSD While Black, appearing with no bra. Therefore, <laughs> camera's up. All right. Anyway, <laughs> it's nighttime. This is my nighttime shirt. I wanted to talk about love. Why I love my husband. I don't have my ring on because I'm going to bed. But I'll find it for you so that you creepy people can be like, mm -hmm, she's cheating. She's making these videos so she can cheat on a man. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Yeah, I'm being all saucy and cheating on my man. Boom, I'm married. Look at that. Anyway, he's laying over there too. You can see his feet. Uh, <laughs> but no, I wanted to talk about how much I love my husband, how much I appreciate him, but how much I couldn't appreciate him when we first got together. Um, as someone with trauma and PTSD, I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm waiting for things to go wrong or for something to fail, or a mistake to happen. And instead, I'm kind of learning now, as we've worked together, we, we write contracts on our relationship, like on the things that we do that are dysfunctional, and what is the functional thing we can do, so that we know what new choices we can make um, as a couple together. And one of my things is I don't notice, or I don't acknowledge enough when I'm being loved. Hi there. I see somebody loving on me now. Woo. Hey, say hello. Anyway, I don't acknowledge when I'm being loved. Oh, they ran away. Mm, I was going to. Mm, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> I don't acknowledge when I'm being loved. And so my better behavior to practice is to pay attention to the moments of when I'm being loved. So this week I had a little bit of a head cold. Um, feeling a lot better today. It's like a two day head cold. Took a COVID test. That was negative. So I'm like, yay. Okay. Um, it's probably ascension symptoms as some of the uh, people in the, the tarot communities. I love watching tarot. It's so much fun. But um, they'll, they'll mention ascension symptoms. But anyway, I was sick. I have this darling man who loves me. <laughs> He's a doll. Um, I don't brag on him enough, but now I've just decided I might make this channel all about bragging on the moments when I'm aware he loves me. Um, I, he, he would ask me when he's coming home from work, Hey, can I pick you up anything? Cause I'm at home all day cause I'm sick. <laughs> and I remember the other day I was like, yeah, I would really like, and don't ask me why y'all when I get sick, I want all the things that I should not have. So I was like, I want chicken. <laughs> get me some chicken wings just like six little wings He's like okay and I'm like and please 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 get me um some Powerade and I thought he was I told him just to get me two and then like today um as I was making my soup and um looking for something to drink I was like oh my god oh my god he got me full he got me four Four. Technically two the other day and two today. Well, whatever. It still don't care. It don't matter. I love him. <laughs> and it just made me happy. It just made me happy that he listens. When he listens, I'm like, so like, yay, I feel visible. I feel real. I feel whole. I feel seen. When he doesn't, I do feel that absence and that lack. And so that's why you cannot put all of your needs for love and connection on your partner. They're human and they're going to do the best that they can. And sometimes they're not going to be able to meet your needs, especially as someone with living with post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I realize that I have a football field sized tub of love. I can give a lot of love to people, but because of the trauma, I need a lot of love back. And so if I keep giving out and I'm not getting it back as quickly, I get depleted. And that's when all the trauma symptoms really start to kick in. So I have to recognize I'm a football field size tub of love. That's why I'm so big, baby, because I'm so full of love. Um, my husband, best he can give me is a shot glass some days. A shot glass or just a glass on his good days. <laughs> a regular eight ounce glass. And here I am needing this big old tub of love. So it's my responsibility to go out and find my tub of love. Why do I bring this up? Well, part of the scandal that I'm a part of is because I was doing romantic voice acting scenes, um, couple scenes, and eventually 18 plus scenes. And it was so cool because I could build up the energy doing the acting and then shove that love back into my partner. Um, 
And some people thought that I was asking for a relationship with him when I wasn't. I'm just saying I need to be able to feel love. And it's my responsibility to fill my cup. So one of my ways of filling my football size cup, football field cup of love is to act romantic scenes to make friends, to, to have phone calls, to have conversations with people, to care about somebody else in their day, to learn more about someone else's day. That's what fulfills me. And so that's just what I was doing. I was doing my responsibility to fill my cup of love. And I think someone got really interested in my cup of love and he wanted a sip. And I'm like, dude, he didn't, he didn't want to sip. He wanted to take my whole cup. He got jealous of me acting with other people to fill my cup of love. And I'm like, bro, I'm married. You're married. You have a wife and a girlfriend and a kid. Your life is full. I am not a possession. I'm just over here filling my love cup. And what I'm wanting to speak to is for those of us who've lived through trauma it's our responsibility to fill our love cup. So take a look at the people that you got around you. Do you have people who are filling your cup of love? Or do you have people that are always out there taking a sip and you're completely depleted? It's okay for you to put your hand over your cup and say, mm -mm, no, you can't have any. Mm -mm. I'm the kind of person like you give me love, I give you back love. That's kind of the way I, it's an equal, equal give and take. Um, and I'm just recognizing that there's this responsibility. And some of the people I got involved with, they were takers. They were just takers and not knowing how to give love. But here's the thing. What, what I titled this is, some people are giving you as much love as they possibly can. And that size may be a thimble. It may be a thimble. And you need a gallon. You know, I, I don't have, I don't even have my jugs in here with me because I drink a lot of water. <laughs> but you know, um, this is going to be weird. So let's say you're a pink moisturizer size and all they can give you is this little medicine cup size of love. It's going to take them a while, a lot of actions with these people to fill you up. But if you can be around somebody who's maybe got a spray bottle size of love, oh yeah, just the right size. Ooh, they can just fill you up like two or three hits and you're good, right? So it's a really a matter of choice. And that's why um, I left my voice acting community is because I was getting depleted and I was being surrounded by people who were takers of love and who were really severe attackers and drainers. And that's not for me. And I know now for myself that if I have people that are around me, if you are in a situation with people who are takers or drainers, then you're not for me. Because you've got to be able to manage your own cup of love. You've got to be take, able to take care of yourself. And that's kind of what my husband and I have done in our relationship as well. When we first got together, it was this, oh, relying on your partner to fulfill you. Mm -mm. So I was depleted and angry. And that's what took us so long for me to say yes. <laughs> Four years before I could say yes to getting married is because I was constantly trying to fill my cup and depleted at all at the same time um, because it, he was needing, but he didn't have people filling his cup. He wasn't out there trying to fill his cup of love. And now we have some really good couples and really good friends and really good supportive people in our lives that his cup is getting filled. He doesn't need me to fill it. And I'm just so happy when I see him playing video games with his friends or they're, they're, they're on the phone together or whatever. I don't give a fuck. I see him playing video games. I'm so excited. I'm so happy because I know somebody else is loving on my baby too. And he deserves it. He deserves it. And that makes me happy. So I just wanted to give that rant because I know some of the people who maybe got involved in gang stalking, you might've gotten misled and you were trying to fill your cup of love also by getting justice or by feeling important to somebody else. You're trying to use that as a method to fill your cup of love. And now you've gotten involved in a situation that's depleting you because you're surrounded by draining people who've gotten you possibly to participate in some illegal acts. So ask yourself, what are you doing to be accountable 
to the love that you need? What are you doing to be accountable to the love that you need? And then always the big lesson that I learned as I stepped away from that community is what am I doing to be the love that I need? Because that's my responsibility to be the love that I need. And if you don't know how to be the love that you need, baby, call me up and I will talk with you. Okay. Be like, mm, what do you need to be the love you need? Huh? Mm. Oh, Sometimes it's just a journal. Sometimes it's just to have an outreach call. I have good people. I do a lot of support groups and I tell people, I'm like, if you just need to call me and scream and go, ah, today sucks. Okay. Three minute phone call. You get to tell me about how much today sucks. And then you can get into talking about what I really need. And it's, it's enough. I encourage people to do three outreach calls a day that are at least three minutes three, three minute outreach call says 10 minutes, roughly in your day, nine minutes to talk to somebody else, fill your cup of love, but be responsible and fill with people who can hear you. And I appreciate a good friend of mine. She'll go, Quinn, I just need to be heard. I don't need any feedback. And I love her so much because I'm like, yes, ma'am, I can hold space for you. Those are the kind of people I want around me. Those are the people I want around me because I know that I can come to them and say, Bay, I call her Bay. Well, I don't want to use her real name. V, <laughs> go with V. I need to be heard. I don't need any feedback. I just need to be heard. We'll set a timer and we talk. And it just feels so rewarding and so healing. So you can do the same thing for yourself. And I'm sorry that no one's out there teaching us to do this on the regular. No one's out there having this conversation. We're still trying to connect through social media and trying to connect through <laughs> telepathy, I think. <laughs> Instead of being able to come to a real human being and realizing we are human beings with human needs and say, I need to be seen. I need to be heard. Give it a try because I'm going to be filling my cup of love. I got things that I can do to fill my cup of love. Ooh, baby, all the things I can do to fill my cup of love. Ooh, yes, it's scandalous. The relationship I have with love. Ooh, I'm in it. I am in it, baby. Round. All right, till next time. Peace.